What's going on? I'm FPL and Taki. Welcome back to another video. Today, it's my team selection video for game week three, where I talk about my transfers and who I've selected in my starting 11, my captain, and who I've decided to bench as well. If you're enjoying the content, make sure you hit that like button, hit subscribe as well if you haven't done so already, and let's take a look at the team. Starting off with how I went in game week two, a pretty average game week has been a pretty average start to the season so far. A couple of my key differentials just have not performed, namely Gabriel. I didn't get Saliba. I missed out on the Saliba link. Havertz hasn't really returned, but someone like Martinelli hasn't really hurt me. It's mostly been up front with Jackson. I decided to go for Jackson from the start of the season because I knew that I wanted him in from game week three, and I was hoping that he could get me at least one return in game week one or game week two. Most other managers went for Watkins or Jao Pedro. Jao Pedro has turned into a bit of an issue now, so I'm glad that I didn't go with him. But if you went with Watkins, you're eight points better off than if you went with Jackson from the start, although potentially you might be one transfer behind. Harlan blanked as my captain. I'm glad that I benched Martinez, and I'm glad that Gabriel came on off the bench to block Martinez's own goal. But it's very frustrating that Saliba got the clean sheet and the two bonus points, and Gabriel missed out on the clean sheet. I was certain that he was going to start against Crystal Palace. He's become a little bit of an issue, but really just two returns in my team, a Stupinan and Imbumo. So very disappointing from a team, but we're looking to bounce back this week. Starting off in goals, we've got Pickford at home to Wolves. Pickford is a little bit of an issue. If I had a wild card, I would not be going with Pickford. But at home to Wolves and in game week four, he's got Sheffield United. Those are two really good fixtures. So I'm content with Pickford. He's not ideal. I think I'd probably prefer to go for Sam Johnston from Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace look really good defensively. So yeah, Pickford's in there for now, but I don't think he'll be my goalkeeper beyond my first wild card. Chilwell's got a fantastic home fixture against Luton, and then he's got Nottingham Forest and Bournemouth in the next two matches. So I'm really happy that I've got Chilwell in place. Ruben Diaz is my first transfer in. So I've got two free transfers this week. I've already made one free transfer. I have sold Reese James, and I've brought in Ruben Diaz. Gabriel, you can see there, is on my bench, as well as Martinez and Archer. A little bit of a benching dilemma this week, whether to bench Gabriel, Martinez, or bench one of my other defenders. I've got Ruben Diaz and a stupid end there for now. I think Ruben Diaz is the best City defender. He's the most secure for minutes. City have the best defense in the league. Guardiola's a good option, but Nathan Ake is there breathing down his neck, and I think that Ake will get some minutes Minutes. And the problem with City is that you get one of their defenders in for the clean sheets, but then they become a little bit of a minutes and rotation risk, especially with the Champions League football starting around game week five, game week six. So for me, I wanted a reliable pick in the City defense, and I think Ruben Diaz is that option. I'm happy to pay that extra 0.5, especially when I was selling Reese James for someone like Ruben Diaz, who's going to be reliable starting each week or most weeks for Manchester City. A stupid end is in my starting 11 at the moment. I did have Gabriel starting, but with a stupid end, whilst he's fixture against West Ham at home, I don't think Brighton's chances of a clean sheet in that game are as good as Arsenal's at home to Fulham, or even as good as Manchester United's at home to Forest. Estubanez looks so good from an attacking perspective that even if Brighton don't keep a clean sheet, he could really hurt me with attacking returns. And Gabriel, I'm not 100% sure that he starts. I think I'm probably about 75% sure that Gabriel does start, whereas Estubanez, I'm like 99% sure that he will start. So it's that security of starts and the potential for attacking returns that means a stupid end is in my starting 11. And Gabriel and Martinez are on the bench. I think United will concede against Nottingham Forest. I'm not confident in United's defense. Looking at midfield, and Mbumo has been probably the best pick in my team so far this season. He's returned in both games in Game Week 1 and Game Week 2. He's got a decent home fixture against Crystal Palace. I'm not expecting a massive return again, like he delivered 16 points against Fulham. But he's got Bournemouth in Game Week 4. I'm in no rush to get rid of Mbumo. He can stay in my team for at least the next few game weeks. He might even still be in my team up until the first wildcard. 
Kai Havertz, this is probably Kai Havertz's last week in my team. He's owned by just 3.6% of the game. So if I can get a return from Havertz, it's really going to help my rank. Fulham at home is a fantastic fixture. I think Arsenal will run riot in that game. I'm just hoping that Kai Havertz gets an attacking return. He's picked up some good positions and he's looked semi-threatening in the build-up, but he's not really getting on the end of any chances. So it was a bit of a roll of the dice and we've got one game week left with Kai Havertz as the experiment. Bruno Fernandes, no temptation to get rid of him. His underlying stats are incredible. I don't want to sell before Nottingham Forest at home. You can see that he's got Arsenal in game week four and Brighton in game week five. Bruno Fernandes or Rashford, I think, will leave the team next week ahead of that game against Arsenal. Rashford, for now, will stay in the team. If you are looking to sell one of these players, I'd probably sell Rashford over Bruno Fernandes. I think Fernandes, he's on penalties. His underlying stats are looking good. With Mason Mount missing the next couple of games, I think Bruno will get further forward. Ericsson will sit a little bit deeper. And Rashford through the middle just does not work. It looks like Rasmus Hoyland will be good to go for game week four, but I think we'll see Rashford play through the middle again at home against Nottingham Forest, and they're not going to give him space in behind to run into. So if you're looking to sell one of the players, I'd sell Rashford over Bruno, but if you can hold on to them both, I think holding on to them both for Forrest at home is a good plan. Saka looks to be off penalties now, which certainly dampens his appeal. I don't know if Saka will be the season hold that he was last season. For many of us, he was in our teams for the majority of last season. I'm in no rush to get him out. Even the United uh, game in game week four, that's at home for Arsenal. I think Saka could still do well in that game. And then he's got Everton at home in game week five. So Saka's not someone I would be looking to buy, but he's certainly not someone that we need to sell right now. And up front, I've already got Jackson in place. If you've got Watkins or João Pedro and you're looking to make that transfer, I think Jackson is the way to go over Alvarez. There's a little bit of a minutes risk around Alvarez, whereas Jackson, you know he's going to be getting the 90 minutes. He is the starting number nine center forward for Chelsea, although the number nine for Chelsea has been cursed ever since Didier Drogba has left. And even before then, I think Drogba's probably been the only standout number nine that Chelsea have had since the Abramovich era began. So Jackson, I think, is the pick of the forwards if you're looking for a replacement for Watkins or João Pedro. Alvarez is a good option and so is Wissa, but I think I would rank them Jackson number one, Alvarez number two, and then Wissa number three. And then Haaland is going to be my captain away against Sheffield United. I think City could run right in that game. I'm expecting a big score there. And as I mentioned, I've got Turner on the bench. No chance that he starts over Pickford. Gabriel, Martinez, and Archer. Now, I still have one free transfer, but I think that I will roll my second free transfer. I don't really see any upgrades that I can make to my starting 11 here. If I was to use that second free transfer, I'll be making my benching dilemmas even more complicated. I could get rid of Gabriel. I could get rid of Martinez, but then I'd probably want to play that replacement in my starting 11, and I don't feel comfortable dropping anyone in my starting 11 as things stand. Another reason for rolling my second free transfer is that when I get to game week four next game week, I will have two free transfers, and I've got a couple of issues to deal with next week. We've got Brighton playing Newcastle. We've got Arsenal playing Manchester United. So I've got six Arsenal and Manchester United players combined, and I certainly don't want to be holding the likes of Bruno and Rashford and Havertz in game week four. So rolling that second free transfer means that I go into game week four with a little bit more flexibility. I can remove Havertz for someone like Eze, who plays Wolves at home. I can even look to make a downgrade from Gabriel to someone like Udogi from Spurs. And then that will give me enough money to buy Trippier for Newcastle's fixtures in game week five and game week six. So that's kind of the long-term plan. Roll my second free transfer, go into next week with two remove Havertz, potentially remove Bruno Fernandes. I don't have as many Arsenal and Manchester United players playing each other next week. United's fixtures do turn ever so slightly. They've got Arsenal and then they've got Brighton in game week five. So that's the team for game week three. Let me know what you think of the team in the comment section below. Let me know as well what you're doing with your team this week. What transfers are you making? Do you have any benching dilemmas? Are you benching a Stupanan or are you going to play him? As you can hear, my voice is almost completely gone. It has been a struggle to get these videos out. So make sure you hit that like button, hit subscribe, show some support for the channel. We're almost 
almost at 3,000. And make sure you join me for the deadline stream tomorrow around Friday lunchtime, 9 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. Thanks so much for watching as always. Take care and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.